Peace fam, Queen here. In this video, we are going to go through and we're going to discuss a bit about um, your retirement account, the options that are on the table for you in the traditional financial sector, and then I'm going to talk about um, some options that are available to you in the new economy dealing with Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. Um, now, I'm pretty sure, you know, depending on your age, um, if you know elders in your community and um, you've seen people, you know, work through their working years uh, with their careers and so forth, um, this whole, uh, the whole 40 year working, um, retiring on 40% of uh, the income that you were making, that model it just it doesn't work and um, it, it hasn't worked and it's been you know smoke and mirrors for a lot of us you know um, and what I mean by that is that whole you know American financial dream hasn't really um, manifested for a lot of people that, that I know you know and I'm sure that you know because the system the financial system it is the traditional financial system it is not set up, it's not designed for you to win. If, if that were the case, you know, there would be more people in the upper affluent income brackets um, in levels, you know, across the planet than, than there is. You know, but when you look at the statistics with, I mean, you can go on to the Social Security Administration's website and you can look and see what the ratio of people that retire in poverty, you know, versus people that retire, you know, financially independent and or wealthy. It's a, it's a vast, vast, huge difference. It's like 1%, you know, uh, retire where they're, you know, independent, living their golden years without any struggles, without any help from family, from uh, government assistant, so forth and so on, uh, that's like 1%, 99%, you know, and you can just look at these numbers within your own life, you know, when you go to Walmart, when you go to these different places and you see the elderly working, they're not working there because they're bored, they're working there because they have to, you know, and um, I say, you know, Thank the Most High for introducing Bitcoin and uh, giving individuals a, a, a chance to, you know, to, to literally become their own banks, um, become their own financial institutions, play at a level that has never been available before. But the thing about it is, is I don't care how many videos I do. How many, you know, people that I attempt to educate, you know, if your ears aren't open to hear this information and then you take action on it, you know, you'll be one of those people, you know, at Walmart, you know, greeting people or, you know, um, standing on your feet at Home Depot or wherever, you know, the situation is because, you know, you just, I don't know, believed in the system that the system was just going to take care of you and the system is designed to, you know, assist you and, and help you become financially independent. It's just really not. It's really not. So, you know, I don't like to talk doom and gloom, and that's not what this video is about. But I just want to share with you some information that sparked me to actually do this video was that uh, my investment account with TD Ameritrade, uh, Charles, Charles Schwab, uh, bought out TD Ameritrade and so they're slowly transitioning our um, investment accounts over to Charles Schwab and uh, me being the nerd that I am the financial geek that I am uh, went through and I'm reading all of the disclosures um, that you know each investor receives with any financial institution that you're with. But most people, they don't read these things. They just, you know, trust that all is going to be okay. 
And uh, what I'm what I'm here to tell you is that that trust that all is going to be okay. You got to change that energy. You have to change that mentality. And you know, if 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 you're wanting to live a different type of lifestyle financially, you got to make moves. And you have to be proactive, and you have to not be mentally lazy, and you have to do some things that are different than maybe your parents and your grandparents did, because you know those things didn't work for them, you know. And I'm saying that with confidence because I know, you know, 9.9 .9 out of 10 people, families, you know, they didn't retire wealthy. I know because the game is rigged. And uh, it's rigged um, where the vast majority, the 99% of the folks, you know, out there in the working world are going to retire broke. They're going to retire broke. They're going to be miserable. They're going to continue to be working, you know, until they decide to leave this planet. And um, my thing is, you know, I retire early because I got into Bitcoin early and I studied this stuff and I've been a student of economy and a student of money and a student of business uh, since I was, you know, a teenager. And um, when when uh, Bitcoin came around, you know, I uh, I dove into it because it was something different, it was something unique. In fact, um, I was just thinking this morning, I was like, you know, it's interesting that a lot of the new technology that's come about, I've been kind of the first within my circle like my family and friends have been like the first to uh, kind of uh, make those around me aware of this. I remember when uh, the internet first came about, I was talking to folks about that. They were looking at me like I was crazy. Um, when uh, the deregulation of um, energy came about, they did this uh, nationwide deregulation. Uh, um, I was kind of the first to talk about that. Um, with the uh, mobile phone services, SMS, all of that, I was kind of the first, I was actually one of the first in my family to have a uh, mobile phone. It was a big, a big uh, brick, if you will, because you had this big old battery, this big old bag, it was this huge, huge thing. It was almost like a small little briefcase. Uh, but I was always kind of like the first on the cusp of new technology. And, um, I'm grateful for that, grateful that, you know, I have ears to hear, eyes to see, and, and, and aware, and um, just have the, the foresight to, you know, kind of look at things and kind of see where things are headed. And right now, you know, if you're not, if you're not totally convinced that we have moved, not that we are moving, but we have moved to a new way of exchanging value via Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, and blockchain, if you're not aware of that, you're like, you're light years in the dark. And you're going to be light years in the dark. And you can't continue to, to you know, have this attitude, well, you know, I'm just going to, you know, keep doing things the way they've been going and, you know, blah, blah, blah. You're, you're going to be, you're going to be, I mean, decimated. You're going to be left behind. You know, you're going to be a greeter at Walmart. You know, and it's sad because uh, there's so much information out here that's available to folks to learn, to earn, to set themselves free. You know what I mean? Like, just people are just, I don't know. I don't get it. I don't get it. But anyway, if you're listening to this video, you know, kudos because I'm going to drop some gems here. And what you decide to do with it, totally up to you, because I'm already free. You know, I'm already financially free. I do this stuff for fun. I do this, you know, YouTube channel, these platforms I do online. All of this stuff could go away tonight, and I would still be good. Me and my family would still be good for lifetimes upon lifetimes upon lifetimes. Uh, because I've done the right thing and put in the study, put in the work, and... Um, you know, not to say that it's hard work, but it's a matter of discerning, you know, what's real and what's not real out here, you know, in the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency space. So anyways, getting back to what sparked me to do this video, T 
TD Ameritrade is being bought out by Charles Schwab and my investment account is being transferred over. So they sent me uh, the disclosures to to read through that each investor gets. And like I said, that most people don't take the time to read. So what I want to share with you, I want to share with you, uh, as you can see here, this on my screen, I want to share, they have an account that's called a sweep account where you can buy shares uh, within their sweep account. And they give you an example um, in this agreement here on a $10,000 uh, investment into their shares. And I just want you to look at here, this is where we're looking, right here, where this chart is, and you see the yearly um, percentages, right? So on a one year, on a one year, um, the APY would be 1.29%, right? Um, nobody can retire off of that. <laughs> On a five-year, it's 0.89%, and then on a 10-year, it's 0.47%. So now, let me let me let me peel back some layers for you so you can understand how this whole game works. So you have your investment banks, you have your Charles Schwab, your TD Ameritrade, and all the other you know investment bankers out there where you can have your brokerage accounts. Now, these outfits are really not set up for you an individual investor to win because clearly you can see you know if you're banking on your retirement funds making you wealthy or financially independent off of a 1.29 percent uh apy or a 0.89 percent on a five year and 0.47 percent on a 10 year then we all know that's not gonna happen right so let's take a look. Go ahead, honey, open the door and close it, please. Thank you. Um, so if you got 10,000, right, invested, and you take 1.29%, that's bringing you $129 a year, right? So when you look at, um, again, these investment banks, they're not set up for, you know, people like us, the just average, everyday, small, mom-pop investor. These outfits are really set up for their friends, the good old boys, the good old girls, right? The families that have the, you know, long history of, of wealth, right? Because 1.29%, if I've got, you know, 50 million, I'm good with 1.29%, all right? So what I'm, what I'm trying to tell you is if you go back in history and you really look and you see how these companies all, how these investment companies came about, it was all about, you know, keeping their friends uh, money in their pocket and, and them not, not uh, losing any money. You know, Warren Buffett said uh, he's got two rules of investing right? Make a profit and not lose any money, right? So 1.29 on a $50 million fund or a $50 million uh, small family office, let's take a look at that, okay? 645000 a year, right? I'm good. You know, me and my family, you know, we've got $50 million family office, you know, just on that particular share alone, say investment stream, you know, we can live comfortably off $645,000 a year. You know, we pay our little fees, pay our little um, office manager for the family office, our advisors and so forth. And I mean, we're good, right? But you, the individual that, you know, you got maybe $100,000 to your name, you know, net worth, you're not going to be able to retire off of something like this. And they know this. It's just uh, the hamster on the wheel, you know, keeping you in the game like you're doing something. But at the end of the day, you're not. All right. Um, and I can go on and on and I'm not. Right. So five year point eight nine, ten year point four seven. Nobody is is nobody's retiring 
with these percentages. Nobody is retiring with these percentages. And I'm going to go through the rule of 72 here in a minute so that you can fully, fully understand that. Let me make sure I'm on task. I wrote myself some notes. Right. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to go through the rule of 72 so you can fully, fully understand. But now that's just, that's just the, uh, the disclosures from Charles Schwab. And um, I'm not picking on Charles Schwab. This is just personal to me because my investment account is moving over to Charles Schwab. I'm not picking on any of them. It's just a business model that they utilize. And every single, if you look at all of the disclosures for every single investment brokerage house that's out there, they're all the same. Okay. They're all the same. So now let's look at, um, this is one option, right? One option for retirement. Let's look at uh, buying a CD. A certificate of deposit so I've got Bank of America pulled up here they're one of the big five so let's take a look at them and see how they can help us retire or not so when I pull up CDs with B of A they give you different options here and uh, looks like the minimum for each of these CDs is a thousand dollars to open up and their terms are, see, seven month to 37 month, 30 days to 10 years, and um, various, various terms, right? This is where I'm reading here. Now let's take a look at their APY, which is their annual yield, okay? So you've got 0.05 all the way up to 4.75. And I can tell you right now that if you don't have a huge amount, when I say huge, I mean in the millions, upper, upper millions, you're not getting anywhere close over 1% for a CD. You're not getting anywhere close. But because they may have, you know, one, two, three, I don't know, handful of huge huge clients you know that have um, <laughs> created their wealth off the backs of others <laughs> um, they can publish this legally and say hey it could be that but you trust me you're not getting anywhere near over one percent okay and then you've got um, early withdrawal penalties and all this kind of stuff, right? And you got to lock it up for anywhere from five to 10 years, right? So let's look at the 0.05%. Let's take that same 10 grand. Say you did 10 grand, 0.05%. It's ridiculous. It's absolute, it's an insult is what it is. It's an absolute insult. Because what's happening now is we're finding out that the banks, the traditional banks, have become aware of the Bitcoin and the crypto industry. And some of these large outfits, they've been mining Bitcoin for years secretly. And even now, uh, modern day, what they're doing is they are literally taking from the traditional you know, banking sector, like say you go in and you put up ten thousand dollars to buy a 10-year cd they're taking they know that they have the ability to play with that ten thousand dollars that you put up for 10 years you know how many times they could flip that over in the in the uh like the decentralized finance sector the DeFi cryptocurrency space they could flip that over they do 0.05 a day right 0.05 a day but they're giving that to you in a year. So this is what you know. I, I, I try and stress to people is to open your eyes to what's, what's taking place. You know, you now have the ability to become your own bank. You can do the things that the banks have been doing with our capital for, for you know, since their inception. You can do those things yourself now with your own capital with the Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency space. So now I want to want to show you. I'm going to show you one possibility. There's many, but I'm going to show you one. Okay. 
and it's called contract monetization. And basically, this is what banks do. So even in the traditional space, even with even excluding the cryptocurrency space, just me going into the bank and putting up or purchasing a CD of $10,000, just stick with this example, me purchasing a CD of $10,000 and they're keeping it for 10 years. If, if I'm, you know, stupid enough to do that, you know, and there are people still doing that, you know, and I say stupid because, um, Ignorance is acting with, with, without knowledge. Stupid is acting with knowledge and still doing the stupid decision. That's what stupid is. And a lot of people are still doing the stupid decision because the information is out here for people to utilize and apply, but they just still do stupid things, right? So they go in and they buy a 10 year CD for 10,000 bucks. You know, and this bank is, is making, I mean, I could leverage that at least into a million. That's being really conservative in 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> um, so anyway, on the traditional side, we're excluding doing anything in the crypto space, right? So person A goes in and they buy a CD for $10,000 for 10 years, right? Person B goes in and say, hey, I want a credit card. Give me a credit line for 10,000, right? So they give this person a credit line for the 10 grand and that credit, their credit line could be on, on a credit card. So, you know, their interest could be, you know, call it 20%, right? 20%. So just look at the numbers, right? Look at the numbers. This is how the banks have a license to screw you. 20, that's the percentage that person B is being charged for the credit line that the bank gave them. The 10,000 came up from person A, right? So the bank didn't put up anything. So we're gonna take that 20 minus right here, the point zero five minus the point zero five. So 19.95%, that's called the spread. It's how banks make money. It's called the spread. So the bank is literally getting 19 point, excuse me, 19.95% of, um, interest from person B and they didn't even put up the capital person A put up the capital right so this is the license and that's just one example you know when you look at all the examples of um, all the products and services that banks offer right and you'll see why they have the tallest buildings uh, why they get all these perks and you know the, the executives get all these bonuses and all this kind of stuff is because we are fueling their business model because we don't know any better I'm saying we I'm saying as a collective right but people are getting wiser and they are starting to learn um, and we have seen large amounts of capital exiting the traditional banking sector and people are opting to do things within the decentral finance sector. DeFi is the nickname, which is Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, where now they can take their 10,000, they can lend it to a platform, and they may make 0.5% a day, or 1% a day, or 0.1% a day, or whatever it may be, depending on the assets, the business model, and the platform that they're utilizing, right? Now, we all know with every investment, nothing is guaranteed. Every investment comes with 100% risk and that you should only put in capital that you are willing to lose and that you can comfortably live without. These are the same disclosures, the same disclaimers that you'll see on these traditional uh, investment bankers' websites, traditional banks' websites. It's all the same, right? You can lose everything, right? So let's take a look at one example. I'm gonna give you one example, contract monetization, right? I just gave you an example within the traditional banking sector. So they monetize that credit card contract and they made, just on that example, 19.95% interest. And they can do that over and over and over again. Oh, and another thing is, because the bank is a bank and they have a license to screw us, the bank can actually multiply 
the amount of that $10,000 CD that you purchased, so the amount of capital that you put up, they can actually multiply that by nine, 10 times. That's called fractional reserve, right? So you can go in there with 10,000 and they can put on their books that they have assets worth 100,000 because that's just the way it is. They have a license to screw us, all right? But I won't even get into that. We can just stick with the, the real numbers without fractional reserve and it's still you know, a, a license to steal, okay? So now, let's take a look at contract monetization and how you can utilize contract monetization. I'm gonna give you one example, one example. And this is the one that I feel is the least riskiest for a person that's kind of just getting their feet wet. They don't want to put up, you know, 10,000, 100,000 or whatever it may be. You know, they could literally leverage a hundred dollars. They can literally leverage a hundred dollars. Let me show you what this looks like. So when you look at, let me make sure I, uh, da, da, da. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let me see where I'm at on time. Ooh, 26 minutes. Okay. Let's wrap this up. So when you look at, I'm showing you right here, this is a, this is a DeFi contract platform that I uh, utilize, right? To make my money go out and make a lot of friends and bring me back a whole bunch of more money, okay? This is what banks do. You gotta think like a banker. You gotta quit thinking like a consumer, quit thinking like a debtor, start thinking like a creditor, start thinking like a banker, okay? A banker, when they go in in the morning, their job is to figure out how to deploy all of the capital that they have or a, a large portion of the capital that they have and have that capital go out and bring more capital. That's the objective and that should be your objective. You know, if you're looking to uh, have financial freedom and, uh, you know, for those of you that might be looking to retire and don't have a solid plan set up for yourself, all right? So in this example here, I'm gonna show you how to leverage a $100 contract, okay? So with the $100 contract within this D5 platform, this $100 contract in three years will yield you $35,000, okay? So now you may say, wait a minute. You're saying $100 yields you $35,000 in three years? Yes, yes. So. I'm going to show you proof here, okay? And then wait, wait. A $100 contract for five years could yield you, and I'm rounding, but the numbers are a little bit more than this. A five-year contract could yield you 471000 in five years, right? But see, most people, they want everything quick. We're in the microwave age, and um, people want you know, they want fast money. They want fast, fast money. They want it right, right, right now, right? But they've been investing in that 401k plan, you know, forever. And uh, they don't complain about that. You know, they're buying a CD for 10 years. It's going to bring them 0.05%. They're not running up and down to the bank saying, hey, you know, give me this and give me this in 30 days, you know. But when it comes to DeFi, <laughs> When it comes to uh, centralized finance, when it comes to Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, everybody wants it fast. You know, sure, there are some platforms that could, you know, potentially uh, give you um, returns that are, you know, less than three years and five years. But again, I said I was going to show you something that has um, the lowest risk, in my opinion, and the lowest capital outlay. So that's what I'm showing you. Okay. So the five year uh, potentially brings you back 471,000. Each contract is 100 bucks, okay? So now we're looking at one of my accounts here. And within this account, you can see I've got um, a bunch of contracts under the three year, and I've got a bunch of contracts under the five year, okay? I think I have uh, 16 of these three years and I have uh, six 
of the five years. So now what happens is the same way that on the traditional side, the same way that the bank monetizes contracts, because what they do is, you know, the example I gave you where person A goes in, they buy a $10,000 CD for 10 years. Person B goes in, they get a credit line using that 10 grand, right? They get a credit line on the credit card, right? And how we got up to that 19.95%. Well, those credit card loans, what the banks do is they bundle those contracts and they sell those contracts, right? They sell those contracts for cash right now. So that's called monetizing or leveraging contracts, okay? So now I'm gonna show you how this platform works so you can monetize and leverage contracts, right? Because what happens here is, and I won't go too deep because um, you can get more information on this. Go in the description of this video and I did almost two hours in two different videos. I think I did 45 minutes in one and like 50 minutes in the other where I really, really break down all the parts to this so that you can really understand. But at the end of the day, you're leveraging contracts. You're leveraging an insurance contract and a bank contract, okay? And you're only putting up, your only outlay is $100 per contract. So that is your risk, if you will, okay? This is why I say it's a low risk, okay? So with that, as you can see here, I've got 16 contracts here. I'm making... Um, I'm making anywhere, this is a total here, I'm making anywhere from 0.1% to 0.3% every single day. Every single day, right? So uh, my most recent daily profit, $681 every day, seven days a week, because this industry does not sleep. So it's every day. So now when you look at 0.1% and every day 365 days that's 36 and a half percent a year APY right now the rule of 72 which shows you how fast you can double your money depending on your interest that you're receiving is you take 72, so let's clear this out, you take 72, you divide it by 36.5, that's 1.97. So it's basically a little bit under two years. So 1.97 years, I double my money, right? So if you think about, you know, if you got 100 grand, you got a hundred grand, right? In two years, that could be 200,000. In another two years, that could be 400,000. In another two years, that could be 800. In another two years, that could be 1.6, right? So that's eight years, 1.6. You still got two years left on that $10,000 CD garbage that you bought. You're at 1.6. <laughs> See, this is what I, I just try to get people to look at things from different perspectives and, and different angles, you know. And, and I realize that a lot of the stuff that I talk about is really advanced for most, you know, um, investors or most, uh, you know, people that are, are, they're not, they don't really understand money. They don't really understand how how money works, how, how money is injected into the economy. They don't really understand contracts and commerce and all of these things. I get it. But if you're one of the lucky ones that do get it, then you've just probably had a light bulb moment, right? So um, that's really all I wanted to share with you here in this video is just to uh, show you, you know, traditionally what's happening out there, how you're being screwed over right, in the traditional financial world, give you an example of something that's low risk uh, that I'm doing. And uh, if it's something that you'd like to do, you know, look in the description of the video, get all the information, right, understand it, understand it all. 
You can ask me questions uh, on Telegram. If you go through the information, you'll see how to get in touch with me on Telegram. And, um, you know, I just, I don't want you to be a greeter at Walmart. I think it's disgusting, you know, to, uh, to live in the U.S., one of the richest, if not the richest, you know, country in the world. And you've got, you know, old people, you know, greeting uh, folks at Walmart instead of uh, enjoying, you know, their retirement. Um, so anyways, that's it for this video. I will see you in uh, my next video.